So here we have one of the most iconic trees of the Pacific Northwest, Pseudosuga menziesii, commonly known as Douglas fir in the Panaceae family. So interestingly, with both the scientific and the common name, it shows how confused botanists have sometimes been in trying to classify the species. So the scientific name Pseudosuga literally means false hemlock. So it's not a true hemlock. The common name, Douglas hyphen fir, um, indicates that they, some botanists have felt that this looked like a fir tree, but it's actually not a fir, it's not an abies. So it's in its own unique genus, Pseudosuga. Um, and Menziesii was named after Archibald Menzieses, an explorer with Vancouver. So some interesting characteristics about the Pseudosuga Menziesii, in terms of its overall form, it can grow anywhere up to about 85 meters tall, or about 278 feet. That's about 25 stories tall. So this can be a really, really huge tree. Not only is it very, can it be very tall, but the bark on older trees becomes especially thick and furrowed, which makes it very well adapted to fire. The needles of Pseudosuga menziesii are spirally arranged around the stem, and even from a distance, they have kind of a soft appearance to them. When you come up and gently grab hold of your Pseudosuga menziesii, they're also very soft to the touch compared to something like your Pisces or your Spruce, which are very, very prickly. The Pseudosuga menziesii also will not have those woody sterigma that you would find on a Spruce. So that's another way to distinguish it from the Pisces. The needles are spirally arranged around the stem. They are about one to one and a half inches in length. And then the buds are pointed with reddish brown imbricate scales. And you'll often see three terminal buds at the apex of your twig. The cones are another really interesting feature of your Pseudosuga menziesii. So the cones are pendulous, meaning they hang down from the tree. They're anywhere from about three to four inches in length. When they first appear, they will be green. And then as they develop, they will turn reddish brown um, as they mature. And then they have these trident or three-pointed bracts. So the three-pointed bracts are a key characteristic of your Pseudosuga menziesii that protrude past those cone scales. There's actually a very interesting story behind the bracts of these cones. So uh, that also speaks to some of the fire ecology of Pseudosuga menziesii. So long, long ago, during the time of the Great Fire, the forest animals were frantically trying to escape this fire that was just raging through the forest. <clears throat> so lightning had set one of the trees ablaze and it had quickly spread through the wind to a great forest fire. So the birds were able to fly away. Some of the larger mammals were able to outrun the fire <clears throat> and flee far, far away. But the mice were really struggling to escape the flames. So the mice ran up to a series of trees trying to seek shelter and safety from the fire, realizing that they couldn't outrun it. So one of the first trees that they ran up to was the big leaf maple. And the big, big leaf maple stood there <clears throat> and shook its leaves and said, I'm sorry, mice, but my leaves are shaking <clears throat> and actually fanning the flames of this fire. I'm sorry that I can't help you. So next the mice ran to the western red cedar. And the western red cedar was already starting to singe a bit. And so the western red cedar also said, I'm so sorry, mice, but I can't help you. So finally, the mice ran up to the Pseudosuga menziesii. And the Pseudosuga menziesii welcomed the mice and said, little mice, run up my furrows, <clears throat> which they did. And they ran high up into the furrows, high up into the branches, <clears throat> and they crawled into the pine cones. And to this day, you will see the little mouse tails stuck within the bracts of the cone, where the mice were able to escape the fire by running up the Douglas fir. So one of the interesting things about that tail is that, um, well, these are not actually frozen mice, as far as I know, tucked into the cones. Um, it does speak to the many fire adaptations that the species has. So this species has adapted very well to fire in a number of different ways. One is this deeply furrowed 
very thick ridged bark. So it's designed to protect this tree when you have fires that come raging through an area, um, especially frequent low intensity fires will often burn a lot of the understory and reduce some of the competing vegetation, but won't significantly impact the tree. Pseudosuga menziesii is also self pruning. So if you look up this tree, you'll see that we don't have branches down near the base. And that again, prevents fire from climbing up into the crown. So if you had branches all to the base, all the way down to the base, like many of our ABs do, or our true firs, those will often catch fire really easily. Plus they're so full of resin that they almost go up like fireworks. So self pruning, thick furrowed bark. And then those cones as, as well, once a fire comes through the area and clears out some of that competing vegetation, those cones are often able to regenerate in these now enriched soils. And the next generation of Pseudosugamensiaceae are able to survive and thrive. In terms of uses, Pseudosugamensiaceae is probably the most important timber tree in the nation. The wood is hard and coarse grained, and so it's used for structural timber, um, veneer, even for pulp. And then the tannin and the wax and cork are used from the bark. This tree also has many other non-timber related uses. So or tea from the tips of Pseudosuga menziesii are really rich in vitamin C and the bark needles and even resin have often been used for herbal medicine. As I mentioned, the timber is pretty strong, hard and dur durable. So everything from joinery, veneer to construction and then Christmas trees. So very, very popular species for use as Christmas trees. And the buds are even used to flavor things like eau de vie, which is a type of brandy. Also very important ecologically. So Pseudosuga menziesii is the prime habitat for the red tree vole. And that's really important because the red tree vole is an important prey species for the spotted owl. Other species such as porcupines, beavers, even bears, white pine butterfly larvae, all benefit from this kind of a tree. So whether it's consuming the cones or even consuming the cambium layer. Pseudosuga menziesii also provides cover and shelter for many, many different species, um, even provides moisture. So voles will actually lick water off the needles. They'll lick the moisture from the needles <clears throat> to get their water. Um, and then it provides support for a lot of other species such as your moss and lichen. So really important for moss, lichen, fungi, and a whole host of species. So you could almost say that this one tree is in itself an ecosystem for many, many species.